Greetings, ladies and mandel jets, and welcome to this latest episode of uh, Tales, Tales from, from Outer from space. Out space. space, where I take a space-related story from around the internet and read it out loud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Please don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph, because if you don't, the nanite swarms will steal your other sock. But more importantly, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you very much. Story number one. Their song written by Cheng Lao. You don't need to be a regular subscriber to my articles to know that humans are universally toad deaf. It's common knowledge to all species across the charted stars that humans are the least musically inclined species ever recorded. Of course, humans themselves would never admit this. They would bring up examples of great human composers, musicians, and sound artists across their history. Names like Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, and Presley would be pulled out of this collective human history with misplaced pride. To this, I have always countered. But what about yourself? Can you sing a song of your own right now? And of course, every human would fall silent in response. I've never met a single human in my life that was able to sing a song of his or her own. Where it would take any other species in the galaxy mere moments to weave lyrics to melody. It typically takes humans several day cycles to do the same. Oftentimes, the human music composer would then have to find a separate human to sing the newly created piece, since the composer's own voice would be insufficient. The singing human would then take several day cycles, more in order to practice and memorize the song, before performing it. Not once, not twice, but for several twenty-eighths of time. Xenobiologists and revered musicians alike have taken a guess as to why the species capable of space flight and nuclear fusion is incapable of so much as singing a simple song of their own at will. Without going into too much of the jargon of xenobiology, the basic theory is that it results from the lack of individuality between humans. Again, human readers on this Ansible network try to defend their self-preserved individuality, but at the end of the day, they all have the same two arms, two legs, and two vocal cords. Yes, really, a single human can only sing two notes at a time, and even that takes a prohibitively large amount of practice. So much so, that not having the same physiological shape as their fellow humans is considered a matter of disability, rather than uniqueness. It must come as a surprise to regular readers of my blog, or anyone that knows my status as a music critic then, that I'd been recommended to review a human music performance. I too considered this some part of a prank at first, but my agent informed me that it was purely business. So there I sat in the auditorium, with only a small number of others in the audience, waiting for the performance which I was already getting ready to criticize. That there were any members of the audience at all was already an amazing feat. Then the curtain lifted, and there stood the humans. Plural. Not just a trio or a quartet. To call that a group of humans would be to diminish the scale and number of humans there. It seemed, at the time, like the entire population of Earth was standing on the stage. It is only later that I would be informed that the humans called this gathering of performance a chorus. This sight caused me to feel dread initially. As the first humans opened his mouth to sing his solitary notes, I feared that I would have to listen to each one of these humans sing their own one-note song until I ripped all seven of my ears off. But before I could yell at the thought of such torture, the most amazing and unthinkable thing happened. A second human voice leapt in to join the song. Their voices clashed immediately course, since they were not quite in perfect sync by galactic standards. However, it was better than the sound of a lonesome, hollow drone that echoed from the voice of a single vocal cord. Just as I began to accept this very minor improvement, a third voice entered into the song, and then a fourth, a fifth, a ninth, a fourteenth, before my mind could truly understand what was happening. 
to the whole of humanity was singing in unison. And here rose where I must curse the limits of written language. I cannot explain to you the feeling that I had felt in that room in such a way that you could too feel it. Yet, I must try, not only because my contract obliges me to do so, but because these feelings have shaken the foundations of my being. The humans sang a song all right, not some song of the wants and the plights of a mere individual. They sang a song of titanic struggles that their collective ancestors sacrificed in blood and flesh to overcome. They sang a song of ancient heroes with names forgotten in the winds of time, a song of great hardships and even greater triumphs of the entire nations of humans. Their song, their unified voice through its volume alone was enough to swallow away the human musicians and audience alike. I wept, I laughed, I wailed at every turn of the song. Their victories became my victories their losses became my losses. It was only when the grandeur song of the humans came to its conclusion that I once again recalled that I was not a human also. Of course, to say that I had nothing to criticize of the human performance would be an exaggeration bordering word crime. But such criticisms pale in comparison to the overwhelming awe of emotions that I felt in that auditorium. In my final verdict, I would recommend everyone in the galaxy to listen to the human ensemble performance at least once. Perhaps you'll be washed away in its passions, just as I was. Or perhaps you'll find your stance unchanged. Regardless, I believe that the galaxy ought to give human music a chance. We've always laughed and cheered at the humans for not having songs that belong to themselves. Perhaps it is time for us to my the songs that belong to them all. End of story. Story number two. What Drives Them? Written by Barsum Israel. I watched a human once rip the arm off a Dalgarian and beat him to death with it, a soldier said, sitting on a smoking drink, mandibles clanking together in excitement. That's nothing. His friend replied, I once saw a human grab a thorax of those big three warriors and squeeze into the puffed too. Here he mimicked the choking air in front of him and taking his hands and wiping them apart. In two! An old, grizzled warrior at the table next to them was glaring in the direction, hatred smoldering in his eyes. Noticing this, the two began to get annoyed. Something wrong, old friend, one finally asked gruffly, glaring back at the old fighter. Oh yeah, the warrior said. I hear you. Humans, am I right? Rip you to pieces as soon as look at you. The two soldiers grinned. Damn right. In fact, the old warrior began, turning to look wholly at their faces. I once saw a human reach into a pile of burning rubble and pluck an infant dream child from the wreckage with what was once his home. Uncomfortable silence was his only reply. I also saw that same large human cradle the broken figure between his chest and weep, weep. The older soldier was glaring at the other two, rage writ large on his face. And that same soldier... Rears streaming down his face, gently laid that child on the ground and went up to the Targaryens that were intentionally targeting females and children. And yes, he ripped it apart with his bare hands. The old soldier stood up, slamming his fist under the table. And I once saw two fools deep in their drinks, sitting safe at a bar, far from conflict and death, telling horror tales about humans relating only to what they did, not relating to what drove them to do it. Throwing a coin on the table, the old warrior turned and left the bar, and for a long while afterwards, silence was in his wake. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope 
that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.